to thank God for His kindness. We thank Him for His love. We've all been heavenly places, received blessings from above. We've been sharing. All the good things this family could afford, but now let's turn our thoughts towards heaven and just praise the. Just the precious name of Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. Let us bow our knee before Him with our hearts towards heaven raised. When He comes in clouds of glory. With him we'll ever reign. We'll just lift our happy voices and we'll praise his dear name. Let's just. Just lift our hearts towards heaven and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the answer. For the world today, above Him there's no other, 'cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other, 'cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. For Jesus is the way. If you have some questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement. And peace you cannot find. 
Reflections of the old past They seem to face you every day But this one thing I know for sure Cause Jesus sees the way that me unite Oh, oh. Sees the way, Jesus sees the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other, but Jesus sees the way. I know you've got mountains that you think you cannot climb. I know that your skies have been dark, you think the sun won't shine. In case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. Yeah, everything that is promised, I tell you, He will do it for you. Let me tell you, Jesus is the answer. Oh, yeah, for the world today. Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio, where we cater food for the mind and soul. Please join us this hour for uplifting music, messages, and more. And now, to the RMG Studios in Miami Gardens, Florida, and your host, the Word Master. Pleasant good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're listening to us and wherever you're listening to us from. You're tuned into Soul Cafe Radio and the series finale of When Life Happens. And yes, I know I've said it all week, and for me, at least all week, it has been true. These subject matters have been huge ones, but I think, especially in the times to which we've come, none of it hits more hits differently and more personal than this one of children, especially in light of the recent school shootings and the other things that's been going on. So today we're dedicating the hour to looking at, you know, the, okay, well, I'll let the scenario a little bit later, but just want to just engage your minds as you follow along with me because, friends, how it's it's a crazy time to which we've come in a certain times but i did a survey prior before coming on the air and the first answer i got to the question which i'll share with you in a little bit is 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 
children. But yes, today the hour is dedicated to our children and when life happens with them. Before we pray, I just want to share with you our scripture reading, which is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. There the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Verse 4, and it's at the heart of our study today. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you, O Lord God, for being to us a God like no other. We love you and praise you and give you all the praise, honor, and glory that you so richly deserve, our dear Savior. Father, as we go through this study today, Lord, I pray that you may place it upon our hearts, Father, to be grateful. I pray that you will place it upon our hearts, O Lord God, to be thankful, to know for sure that you are our God, and besides you there is no other. O Lord Jesus, on this morning, on this afternoon, this evening, whenever your children are listening, Father, I come to you humbly as I know how, because I would love to do this subject matter all the justice that it deserves. And I pray, Father God, that you, O Lord God, may be glorified in all of this, I pray. And I ask all these things in the majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So, once again, I want to thank you for joining us. If you're joining us live, or even if you're listening to the podcast and something is said that piques your interest, brethren, I encourage you to share. I encourage you to share. And when we come back from our song break, we are going to, I'm going to put the question out there on the floor, and then we are going to transition into our theme song. And those of you who are listening from the website, you can send me a comment in the answer. Those of you who follow me on social media, you can send your comments under where you got this notification from. So we're going to come back from a song break, and then I'm going to put a question out there on the floor. And I pray that as we've been looking this week at these issues from the Bible, that it doesn't stop here on today, that we keep on going. No matter what we've talked about this week, there's other issues that the Bible has answers to. And I know for a good chunk of humanity, it doesn't really. And that's why they try to find their answers, as we heard in a song, in other things. But we who are believers know that this is our manual, this is our all-inclusive manual, and it covers everything. This week, I also want to share with you the fact that it's not so much the book that I'm endorsing the black and white pages and the leather binding. I'm endorsing the God of that book, Jesus, the answer. He himself said that you search the scriptures when they may think you have life, but you will not come unto me. I want to have you, first and foremost, introduce people to Jesus. Even if you're doing it through the Word and you're doing it through Bible study, bring them to Jesus and not all the other things. Because when you bring them to Jesus, he says, I'll make all the other things make sense. And so we're going to just take a brief song break and then we come back and we're going to have, we're going to put a question on the floor out there for you to answer me in any of the forums to which you receive the message. Or if you are listening from the website, you can just hit me up in the contact page information. So we're going to pause and play a song that we just made reference to that people need the Lord. I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through pride 
private pain Living fear to fear Laughter hides their silent cries Only Jesus hears People need People need the Lord, and indeed they do, indeed they do. So, for those of you who are following along on the speaker platform, you see the question there in the chat box. And for others of you, the question on the floor is, in light of all that's been going on in the world, there are food shortages, the the crisis, the pandemic, the wars, the senseless slaughtering of children, and all the other things that children have to contend with in their young lives, as we've seen recently, don't know if they're going to make it past their fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth birthday, even. I know persons didn't stop having children, so in the past two years, there were children being born, even in a time of pandemic when death was just a breath away, literally, 
question is, what made you say, you know what, I'm going to bring a child into this world? So, like I said, on all my social media platforms where you see this post, you can answer the question there. If you follow me on the speaker platform, you can put it there, or you can send me a message on my on the website that you're following on Soul Cafe Online, and just engage with me. And if I chat back and look at answers within the hour, but some things were shared. Like I said, I did a survey earlier before I came on, and just want to share something that was said. And it was, like I said, a very honest answer, very honest answer. And I wanted to share that with you, but. I'm sure that your experience might be different, but we're going to do so right after this. So when we come back from this song, we're going to begin our study proper for today. And I hope that you would have hit that share button and have someone come in to the experience. Stay tuned. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. The Bible says in Psalms 127 and verse 3, Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So, on the, yesterday, and I know for yesterday it's going to be relative when the podcast is being repeated, but this was, say, June 9th. I was seriously not intending to do research on this particular, well, in this particular area, of research that is, but I came across two items in browsing the internet. One of a gentleman who had 30 children and he was taken flack, as it were, for it on social media, and so he had to push back. I saw another article of another young man who, well, has seven children. Unfortunately, one of them died rather young, and like I said, even not before the age of five, but before the age of one. And of all things, brain cancer. A five-month-old having brain cancer, much less dying of brain cancer. And so, when the question is raised, why would you bring children into this world? The answers are varied. But one answer that came across my mind was the actual answer that was the first answer in the survey that I made mention of several times before. And that answer was selfishness. Selfishness. You know, especially growing up in an atmosphere, in a culture where 
you're about to hit a certain age milestone and the pressure is on. Oh, you're turning, let's say, 30 or 21 or whatever it may be for you. And you don't have any children yet? Man, you're going to be old and alone. You're going to be an old maid. And then you're not going to have anyone to take, take care of you in your old age. Or you're not going to have anyone to do stuff for you when you need it done. And so that's the reason for many women to have children. And I'm not saying, you know, anything particularly wrong with having a large family. I come from a large family and I would not wish that any of my brothers and sisters were to be pushed back up the womb. I'm not saying that at all. But there are challenges that come with these and especially in the world that we've come. But the thing is, no matter what, two years of a pandemic, we keep on having children. Threat of nuclear winter, we're still having children. The earth's going into global warming, we're still having children. Madmen becoming politicians and dictators, we're still having children. Child trafficking, we're still having children. Children being shot to death in their schools of all places, and we're still having children. But why? And I think it goes to the heart of another answer. You see, the songwriter says, because he lives, this child can face on certain days. And today, as we see, children indeed are an heritage of the Lord. And it is up to the, especially the God-fearing parents to give these children a firm, a solid foundation from which they will not turn away. You see, oftentimes, right, we quote Proverbs 22, 6, and we're going to get back to that. But in Colossians 3.20, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in all things, but this is right. And we understand the context of all things, knowing full well that the all things is not a blatant disregard of you know, moral, morality. You know, old child, go rob the supermarket for me. Go, you know, take this off the shelf and put it in your pocket and walk out the store for me. We know that that's not the all things the Bible is talking about, the all things that are right. Training. One of the things that I do realize that we are negligent of, and I mentioned this this morning in my church group's devotion, and again this morning as we're talking for those this in future, is June 10th. June 10th. And one of the things that I realize about children is consistency. Consistency, right? And so they constantly need, well, let's look at the essentials, food, clothing, love, to be make sure that they're in good health. We give those consistent things, right? We make sure that, for the most part, as much as possible, they can keep them safe from hurt, harms, and danger. But when life happens, and children come into this world, with, as I've been saying all week, without the parental handbook of what happens when they stub their toe to what happens when they go out there in the world and experiment for the first time in sex, alcohol, or drugs. What do we do? What do we say? How do we? No other handbook do we have but the handbook that, like I said, it really matters. But again, some parents do not have the privilege of having this amazing manual. And so the life is like, it's, 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 a, it's a toss up, as it were. And there's a lot of frustrations, but again, still, without the benefit of a how-to parent book, and I mean the definitive one, not what some person who doesn't even have a child decides to write, it's because they have a PhD. But yeah, you find yourself as a mother and a father too, there in the delivery room, and there, for the first time in human history, a child has come out of you. And right away, you don't see the little infant before you. The one that's taking his first breath of free air apart from you. And there's all those potentials. President, prime minister of your country as a prime minister. And dare you dream one day this child is going to be the one that cures these uncurable diseases. 
This child is going to be the one that makes all the difference in the world. This child is going to, this child of mine, this beautiful, bouncy, baby boy, baby girl, is going to make all the difference in the world. And so you grow them, and you grow them, and you grow them. And they hit their terrible twos, and you endure all that. You grow them, and you grow them, and you grow them. And so they hit their, their tween years, and they start to show signs of, hey, wait a minute. Instead of raising a deer, I'm raising a dictator. Instead of a future president, hmm, I wanted the path that they're going to go down acting like this. But that's nothing compared to when the teenage years hit. And again, going back full circle to study one, peer pressure really sinks in. And it goes from shooting spitwads at the girl in the front seat to shooting a gun off. And God forbid, shooting at someone. This you did not sign up for. This you didn't anticipate for. This you didn't expect. But again, as I've said from study one, there is an answer. There is an antidote. There is a solution when life happens and these things get thrown at you and your little bouncing bundle of joy, new to the world. Nobody else's kid is as pretty as mine. Nobody else's kid is as handsome as mine. Look at my little cutie. And they end up being in disgrace to the family name. There is an answer. There is a solution. So remember earlier I mentioned Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. I often have to remind persons that Proverbs 22, 6 is not just about the positives. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he shall not depart from it. Many people read that and... A lot of them do get discouraged because they see that, oh, I've done the best I could. I've trained them right. I've fed them. I made sure they went to school every day. They didn't go to school hungry. They came to school with good clothes and made sure they got good grades. And I funded their college. And even in their early careers, I made sure that they had a good foundation. I don't know what happened now. Proverbs 22.6 is not a promise from God that your child will be an angel if you set them on the right path. Proverbs 22.6 is a cautionary tale that if you see them going down a certain path that's dangerous and you don't break the habit, they will not depart from that. Dear listener, your young person is an individual and so no amount of you having Bible study with them all the time, no amount of you taking them to church all the time will give them a fixation of the mind. That has to be their will. That has to be the will that they're going down that you foster. You get it? You see, oftentimes the opposite actually happens. You wake that child up 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. It's time for family worship. And they begrudgingly get out of bed after going to bed late after a late night of homework. Sleep still fresh in their eyes and you're saying, Johnny, Johnny, why aren't you singing? Come on, be thankful to God. All the while that child is thinking, man, I'm doing an extra hour of sleep. And you forcing God down their throats is doing no good. And I'm not mincing words on today because it matters. It, it, it matters. You know, we think that we're doing the right thing. There's a way that seems right to man, the Bible says. But the ends thereof are the ways of death. It matters. Again, the important thing is not that you think that if you train up a child in the way he should go, he will not depart from it. It's an admonition to take your child to church, make sure they're reading the Bibles and praying and whatnot. No, it is saying what you see happening in that individual child's way. If it's bad, break the cycle. If it's good, nurture it. If, if you see them, if you see them reading the Bibles and singing songs on their own without your intervention, without your prompting, foster that. Get them a good hymnal or 
piano even in the home and, you know, encourage them, you know, to, oh, to sit beside them as they read their Bibles. Don't say a word as they read and explore God for themselves. Foster it, nurture it, make sure your home is conducive to when that child, you know, has that mindset to morality. And don't feel that you need to lord it over them. Again, it's not about what you can do because oftentimes we want to live vicarious through our children. Again, going back to my survey and their first answer, because we're selfish, we bring children into this world. Because someone says that this is what we're supposed to do by the time we're 30, we bring them into the world. And so I brought you into this world and you're going to be doing what I want you to do. The other person, like I said, said, I know that there are challenges in the world. I know that there's hardships in the world. But with God, I know that I could make it through because he gave, he gifted me this child. And I know that I could make it through. And see, that's the foundation. It's not, it's not my child. It's not my child. Remember, I just read Psalms 127 and 3. Children are in heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb, he says, is his reward. It's not just a product of biology, chemistry, and all that. It's because of the, it's a gift of the Lord. Children belong to him. They're, they're lent to us from God, and we're supposed to be stewards. We're not supposed to be steering them wrong, as it says in Ephesians 6 and verse 4. But Ephesians 6 and verse 4 is actually the correct scripture for parents to have been learning all along. Ephesians 6 and verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, that's not the part I'm focusing on, but it needs to be talked about. So we will. But the part that says, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's where, as you see them growing up and walking on that path, that you nurture them in that way. And that the admonition of the Lord comes into play in this verse. Well, these verses, Deuteronomy 6, from 5 to 9. Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9. The Bible says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. That long narrative begins this way because that's the foundation that needs to be set. That's the foundation that needs to be set. Remember, like I said, people don't need the words, the letters of the Bible first. They need the Lord first. They need to have him ingrained in the heart. And like I said, if you have to do a little Bible to get that through, then so be it. But let them fall in love with the Lord. Let them have a relationship with him. And the words that they read, the words that come off the page, they would want to make applicable to their lives because they love the Lord. Allow your children to love the Lord. Don't push, don't prod, don't poke. Because God does not push and prod and poke. Notice is how he operates. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. See, it has to be there first, parents. It has to be there in your heart first. It can't be something that you just point off on your children. Oh, I don't go to church. Oh, I don't read my Bible. Oh, I don't pray. But my children will because it's good for the little children to have these little morals. The songwriter says, it was good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. And so, what you want for your children, they ought to be able to see embodied in you and not just a series of rules and regulations that you palm up onto them. No, sir. No, ma'am. It does not work that way. It has to come from your heart level first. Notice again, the admonition continues. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Friends, these words I just read, certain persons take them literally, and do these. But what the Lord is simply saying is he's not trying to be literal. And he didn't intend for the people to be literal. But 
oftentimes this is what happens. But he's saying every inch, every area of your life has got to be with that one foundational principle that you love the Lord with all your heart. Everything in your home must convey that fact. In fact, the sanctuary as it was and the lessons that it taught, every article, every furnishing, every piece, every inch, every sector of that structure testified of God. And that's what he's saying for our lives. Everything about us ought to be to the praise, honor, and glory of God. Not to write these things on our walls and have them here physically in front of us. Again, it's not about the letter of, the, of it, it's the principle, the spirit of it, that will matter. Notice what Isaiah 54 and verse 13 says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. I used to couple Proverbs 22, 6 with Isaiah 54, 13, when I used to encourage parents to do this. However, I have since come to realize that Isaiah 54, 13, Colossians, Ephesians 6 and 4 are the principles, the nurture and admonition of the Lord. These are the principles that matter. These are what really count. Because at the end of the day, my friends, at the end of the day, it's clear. Let's think about it. The son that came out of the home that we term the prodigal son. Did he come out of a home that was tyrannical and abusive and a home that said, Matt, I want to flee from here? No, he did not. The Bible doesn't say that it was a tyrannical home. It doesn't say that it was not a tyrannical home. But we know that it wasn't because his father was not a dictator. The son actually was a dictator, if you could believe it. He dictated the terms of his inheritance. He said, you know that commercial, it's my money and I want it now? That's what he said to his father. And you know, as you know, an inheritance is only given after you're dead. And basically, he was disparaging his old man. Old man, I can't wait till you die. You know, I want my money now. I, I can't wait. I can't wait that long. He did not come from an abusive home. He did not come from a home where his parent, you know, had a heavy hand upon his neck and, you know, just wrung life out of him consistently. It was, as we go back to study one, peer pressure of this world and the things that people were whispering into his ears. Burr, you're 18 now. You're your own man. It's time for you to get up at your father's house. And his father would have gladly have him there. He did with the other one. He didn't tell any of them, it's time for you to get out and get married. It's time for you to be on your own. Remember when the prodigal son came back and the conversation he had with the other son? It's telling of the father's heart. And so we know that the father did not change overnight his attitude when the son left. This was always the father's heart. So parents have said all that to say that sometimes it's not what you do that causes them to go. So you could do all the nice things in the world. You could, you could make the home the most conducive it is. But just like with you, they also have their minds. And there's a way that seems right unto them. And they will follow that way and they will go along that way. And that's why it's very important that you, that you inculcate principles in childhood like one I read the other day. I didn't allow my, my children to go into that person's home. But that person was free to come into my home. And a lot of parents adopted that, especially parents coming from many cultures that embrace principles of it takes a village to raise a child. Brethren, I hope that going forward, when you think about it as being a parent, you understand just like being a couple, that at the foundation of it has to be God. At the head of it has to be God. God has to be seen as parent and you're just guardian. It has to be seen that way or else your morals, independent of his, your ideas of what it takes to raise a child, independent of his, are going to subvert his. And a child is going to grow up under your tutelage rather than his. 
Again, the Bible says, All your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. Brethren, I want to close off today with a very, very sobering scripture. One that I pray by the grace of God, that if you are a parent and your child has strayed away from what you have taught them in growing up, that you embrace this promise. The Bible says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? It's a question that God is asking. That's Isaiah 49, 24. 25 says, But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. In other words, someone captures someone, and they might be the mightiest person, whoever. Someone can easily come in, creep in, and take away their captives. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Notice what God says. For I will contend with him, that's the devil, who contends with you, and I will save your children. Isaiah 49, 24, and 25. So, parents, there's indeed hope. And that hope can begin from day one if not the principles of this is my home and you will do things my way. And not, not laying down laws, but living principles from day one that that child can be in a nurturing environment where they could grow up with that nurturing. And God forbid something awful should happen to them in this life and that they, they will depart from your teachings. One day, one day, if your home is a home that's after this order where the principles of God were lived out rather than dictated out, one day when they have hired themselves out after coming from a rich home, one day after years of living the luxurious life and then having nothing, one day they will come to themselves and remember their parents' home. And it is in that moment when they come to themselves that they'll come back to God and ultimately they'll find their way back to you. But like the father in the prodigal son story, your arms must be opened every single day. You must be consistent in your love. And like I said before, remember, that's what children need. Be consistent in those things that we think that's important, the food and the shelter and the clothing, the education and the whatnots. But when it comes to things of eternal value, we become negligent. Oh, parents, parents. Yes, you brought up your children in rough times and tough times. And yes, indeed, some of you have thought, well, you know, I'm going to give this child the best years in life. I may not have had it, but I'm going to make sure that in my old age, that dear, dear, they'll take care of me. Again, like I said in our previous study, Children aren't created because of that. Children are created because love produces. Because love produces. And children should come into this world because of an act of love. Not because of a one-night stand or some unplanned moment. Not because two young persons were not careful in what they were doing. Brethren, so many children, so many unborn children were allowed to pass through the doctor's knife because young persons were not careful, because they gave in to temptation. You see, friends, even in childhood, children must be made to know how precious children are. Even in childhood, they must be made to understand how sacred of a life they are invested with and not to take it granted. Dear listener, it is the prayer of my heart that if you are a parent listening to this, that you understand the gift that God has gifted you with. And if you have not, and if you have done a terrible job, if you have squandered what God had placed within you to be the most effective parent, God willing, it's not too late, and you can begin again. I pray 
by the grace of God, that you will open up your heart, yourself again, for God to love you and for you to have that experience. Because one day, as you continue to pray for that wayward child, as you continue to pray for that troubled child, as you continue to pray, and by child, by child, you already know that I don't mean necessarily that one that's under 18. As old as they get, they will always be yours, married or not. They will always be your children. And as you continue to pray, the word of the Lord says, I will contend with him that's contending with you, that is the devil. And I will save your children. Parents, be consistent and understand that, yes, this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Friend of mine, I want you to take God at his word and believe. And as we close out again, I'm going to play back the song I played earlier, Jesus is the Answer, just to close out our series for this week. When life happens, there's an answer from God's word. Friend of mine, truly, truly, say it again as I close. Children are from the Lord. They're not just a gift of biology and chemistry. They're not a product of just. They are a gift from God. They are precious. And the Bible says that anyone who mistreats them is an angel of theirs that beholds the face of God. And that person one day is going to wish that they were never born than harm the precious ones. Parents, may that not be you. May not that be you, parents, who do more harm than you've been warning your children from and trying to protect them from. May you not be the harm that this Bible prophecy is talking about. Pray on it. Pray over it long and hard. But again, I say be consistent in your rearing of your children. Present to them the love of God. Let them see as little of you as possible and the majority of God on a daily basis. Let that be the model that they grow by. So when they grow up and leave father and mother and cleave to their spouses, then the next generation of young persons can begin on the foundation of love. Again, the answer is not found in anywhere else but in Jesus. When life happens, my friends, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other, cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other, cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other, for Jesus is the way. If you have some questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement, and peace you cannot find Reflections of the old past They seem to face you every day But this one thing I know for sure Cause Jesus is the way Let me unite Jesus is the Jesus is the answer for the world 
today. Above him there's no other, but Jesus saves the way. I know you've got mountains that you think you cannot climb. I know that your skies have been dark, you think the sun won't shine. In case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true. Yeah, everything that is promised, I tell you, He will do it for you. Let me tell you, Jesus is the answer. Oh, yeah, for the world today. There's no other. Jesus is the way. Oh, Jesus is the answer. He's the answer. For a world today, Jesus is the way, truth and life. He's the only way, my sweet Jesus. Before I pray and close out, I want to recommend two important pieces of information for you. One is a book entitled Child Guidance, and the other is a few chapters in a book called Ministry of Healing. One has to do with the role of the mother, the other home training. And I want to recommend all of these because they are beneficial, especially especially in service of raising children for God's glory, who you know for sure close out. The Bible says that there's going to be a reckoning, as we saw yesterday, where he asks for the flock, the beautiful flock, and you're able to give an account for you and yours. I pray by the grace of God that we consider these things. We sit down and plan and make sure that there's no failure when we have said, you know what, this year I'll have children and we count the cost before we start to build until, unless we are not able to finish. Brethren, the goal is to finish strong and you want your entire family with you at the end of the race. But it begins with a good, strong foundation and in everything that I've said this week, go back and look at it situation in your life, I mean, for everything, for every situation, Jesus has been the answer. There has always been a word from him as to how to deal, how to cope with the situation you've been going through. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with us today. I pray by the grace of God that some parent would have been blessed, emboldened, encouraged to go forward, knowing that even though that they haven't the answers, but you do, and because you live, the child that they have brought into this world can face on certain days. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for the children of our world today, Lord God. You see the conditions to which they have come in, Lord God, and I ask you to preserve them, protect them, watch over them, and keep them. Be with their parents, dear Lord God. Provide for their parents so that they can provide for their children. And may you, Heavenly Father, may you pray. Place it upon your shoulders, O oh God, 
that the child that you have ordained to be brought into this world, Lord, I pray that they may be kept by your care, by your keeping. Be with us now as we seek to be dismissed from this forum. Guide God and keep us, O Heavenly Father, and continue to do for us that which we know that we cannot do for ourselves, we pray. In the majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you, everyone, for joining me this week for this all-important study. I invite you to join me next week when we begin a new series, and may you continue to find in Jesus the answer for the world today. God bless you abundantly. Thank you for joining us today on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to powerful music and messages for the mind and soul. Join us next time when we deliver more of the same. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.org.